hey guys welcome back to my sewing room and today's video i'll be showing you guys how i made this dress this video is in collaboration with one of my good friends dami i will put her link below in the description box for you guys to go ahead and check out her video i've also partnered up with fabric wholesale direct to bring you guys this video they sent me this really pretty ankara fabric um it is really vibrant orange and it has um tealish blue um flowers all throughout i am also using this orange uh lining fabric that is also from fabric wholesale direct some matching thread a matching zipper a quarter inch elastic i'm using push-up cups in a d cup as well as um underwires in the size 40 i will link below to where i get the cups in the underwires i love her shop and i'm also using um batting for the pat for the padding so i'm kind of showing you guys a little bit of behind the scenes here i'm sorry if my voice is super cracky i am sick today y'all well all week i'm i'm just really sick um but i'm trying to you know be out here and, and push out these videos for you guys so i'm just pinning my pieces onto the fabric and notice that i have my pieces actually pretty close together because i want them all to have a similar pattern so i'm going to go ahead and pin everything and then i'm going to go ahead and cut out the skirt now i didn't um i don't want to go ahead and explain how i did the skirt because this was highly 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 experimental i mean well this whole dress was this is a little bit out of my uh comfort zone but i decided to go ahead and do it um pretty much for the skirt i just measured my front um the front of the skirt and i divided that by three and that's how i got uh the width of the top and then i just kind of made it as wide as i wanted it to be and then i did the same thing for the back except i had to divide it by four you guys please don't ask me any questions about this panel skirt i i i need to i need to practice um and i will come back and do a formal tutorial when i actually figure out the panel skirt but there are plenty of other tutorials here on youtube that show you guys how to do the panel skirt after I cut out the skirt, now I am going to go ahead and prep all my pieces. So by prep, I mean I'm going to go ahead and fuse together um, or fuse on my interfacing from all of my cups. And then I'm going to give all of my uh, skirt, all of my dress pieces a really thorough press. And I like to use steam. Be careful with the steam though, guys, because this is cotton fabric. And you know what happens when you pre-wash cotton fabric, right? it'll shrink so make sure you're not steaming it too much because it may pre-shrink uh, a little bit of your pieces unless you did pre-shrink your your fabric before you did this and i'm also going to um iron out the underlining for this underlining i'm using a muslin gauze now that it's new to me i'm not sure if it's new to you guys but i actually really like it it's really thin and really crisp it's a great underlining and i'll be using that for a couple of my structured wedding dresses here uh, moving forward but I'm just going to go ahead and continue prepping all of my pieces. And then I'm going to go back over to my sewing table. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have finished prepping all of my pieces. Now I'm going to put my back pieces to the side and go ahead and work on the front. I'm going to start by marking my bones. And I didn't put... This video is not really a step-by-step -step tutorial, guys. Because it was very experimental, like I said earlier, for myself. So this is more of a how i made it vlog if you will and i i probably will do um quite a few of these uh, as time goes on when i'm experimenting with new designs and new um techniques here so i just want you guys to like i said uh, learn and grow together on with me so this is what it looks like after i finish marking my bones and it, uh, going back i would add extra bones on either side of my center front bone because i needed that support there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a centimeter down from all of the top of my bones so that I know where I need to stop my bones. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew my bones on. Now, you, if you were doing this, guys, uh, for yourself or for a client, you need to, to um, finish off the top of your bones. I did not finish off the top of my bones because, well, I didn't have any tape, to be quite honest. And I could have used muslin squares, but it would have taken the time. Um, that I did not have for this dress. So I just went ahead and sewn it on there. And like I said, this dress isn't going to get a lot of use. Um, so I'm not worried about um, the bones poking through the fabric. And there are plenty of layers in here to go ahead and pat that up anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and sew um, on either side of all of my bones. My poor sewing machine. I know. I don't want to hear it. Um, I need an industrial saw machine, but I'm saving for it. So you guys will see that um, pretty soon here, as well as a little bit more brand uh, rebranding on my channel and 
some new cameras so look out for that i'm gonna go ahead and finish off all of my pieces and i will be back so i have I'm just using one layer of batting. I think one layer will be just fine because there's no bones in the um, in the cup area. So that. To reduce some bulk in these seams, I'm going to go ahead and just cut back all of the batting out of the uh, seam allowance. And now I'm going to go ahead and give my cut pieces a really good press. And when I say really good, I mean press it like your life depends on it. So I am using lots of lots of heat, lots of steam. Everything here that we're using is, is cotton so it can take it. I'm also using my homemade pressing ham and really getting that curve pressed in there because, I mean, it's a cut piece. You want it to be nice and curvy and curved to your bust area. So this really, really makes or breaks the cup in my opinion um so go ahead and make yourself one of these um taylor's hams or pressing hams cut pressing molds i don't know whatever you want to call it out of um, muslin and your scrap fabrics on the inside i use polyfill on the inside of this because that's what i had um and it, look at the difference here from press to non-press so impressing is very important and i always think that the most important part of dressmaking is pressing Pressing differentiates um, homemade from professional. So make sure you guys really take the time and press all of your garments. Okay, so I have no idea what happened to the footage of me sewing the princess seams, but you guys get the idea. Oh, they found me. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew the cups on. So I'm going to match the princess seam first, and then I'm just going to pin up on either side. And of course, it wouldn't be a mom that sews tutorial if I didn't prick myself like, like Sleeping Beauty. So... <laughs> Of course I pricked myself, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pin up either side. And I have that little extra flap there because when I was doing my mock-ups, um, I could never get enough. There was always like a gap there. So I just added extra fabric there and then I just cut it off at the end because I just wanted to make sure that I had enough. So I'm going to go ahead and pin on both sides and I'm going to sew that with a one centimeter seam allowance. And then I'm going to check the fit of that um, and it actually fit a lot better around the bust than I thought it was going to. So I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off that extra little bit that we left there or that I left there um, just to make sure that it would fit. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew on some bony tape to my princess seam there. And I know you guys are probably noticing uh, all of the interfacing there. The interfacing is just because my... Uh, my uh underlying was starting to fray away a little bit and i just had to uh, reinforce it in a couple of areas so what i'm going to do is just sew on um my bony tape to just the seam allowance so you don't see it from the outside and the way i bone this i really like guys and i may implement this in one of my wedding dress videos because i think it's just way easier than having an extra layer in there for um for structure so i'm going to go ahead and experiment with this way a little bit more but anyway like i said i'm just going to put this here on the seam allowance and then i'll be back And then I'm going to check the fit of it once again, and it fit uh, really nicely again. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on. And then I'm going to place some more boning tape here onto just my seam allowance that I used to sew the cup onto the bodice. And I'm going to go ahead and pin that all the way around. And this is going to be pretty much my channel for me to uh, sew 
not so my channel for me to insert my underwires into now if you guys uh work with bustier kind of cups more often let me know a better way to insert my under your underwire uh, i had some issues here with my patterning i think that's my uh, my cup although it did fit me quite nicely the shape of it was a little bit off to me and i'm not sure how i can go ahead and correct that because it fit my underbust it it got right to where my underbust was and it was on the start and stop on uh you know on either side of my bust so i'm not sure I, how i can correct this but i still think that my cup was a little bit misshapen so uh give me guys uh, guys give me some advice down in the comment section below or uh go ahead and let me know in our group our facebook group i'll link i'll link it down below again so we can discuss how to uh, better shape these cups Next thing I'm going to do is sew up my center back seam. I'm just sewing up to the point where I want my zipper to stop. I like sewing the center back seam first before I insert my zipper, but you guys can do it any way you feel comfortable. And then I'm going to sew my zipper in with my usual method. So I always do uh, two rows of stitching. I do the first row a little bit further away from the zipper tape just to secure it in place. And then I go ahead and sew it uh, right on the zipper tape. I mean, you know, like right really close to the teeth just to make sure that um, my zipper is going in nice and straight. The second uh, the second row of stitching is just making sure that it is nice and tight and you can't um, really tell that the invisible zipper is there. Now I am sewing my princess seams, my back princess seams. So I'm going to go ahead and sew those. And um, notice that I didn't underline my back pieces because I didn't... Um, add any structure well initially i didn't at the end i uh hand stitched on some boning just down to the waistline uh on the princess seams of the back to help that uh, keep, keep that nice and straight but um initially i didn't foresee having boning here so i just sewed down the princess seams on both sides and then i went and um, did a fitting again Oh, I saw, obviously, I saw the side seams since I have it on, and it fit really nicely. Uh, my only quarrel here is that um, there's a little bit too much here in the princess seams in the front and the back, and then there's also um, a little bit too too much extra in the side seams. So I went ahead and just pinched it in a little bit, and it's so hard to fit myself, and this is why I usually don't um, make anything for myself. But anyway, um, so I just pinched that in and then here it is with the corrections made. I think it fits a lot better. I'm still getting that um, folding over there um, where kind of where my stomach stops. And obviously that's because I have a, I actually do have a stomach and there's a hollow underneath the stomach. So that's why I'm having a little bit of issues here. You see where the, f the fabric is folding under. And I think this could actually be corrected if I added a couple more bones on either side of the center front bone. And I mentioned that a little bit earlier. So um, I'm pretty sure that would have remedied that. But obviously it's a little bit too late to be sewing bones in the middle of things. So uh, next thing I'm going to do is sew my skirt onto the top. So all I did was connect all the panels um, together in one big circle pretty much and then i pinned it onto the um i pinned it onto the bodice part of the dress and i'm just going to go ahead and sew them together like i said guys this really is not a this is how you do this and this is how you do that tutorial this is more of a watch me experiment and let's go ahead and discuss uh the different methods that could be used to achieve something similar uh th the different methods that could be used to achieve it better than i have here so um this isn't this isn't educational as far as let me teach you how to do this this is let's learn and let's grow together After I sewed the um, skirt to the to the bodice part of the dress, I just cut a bias strip of this same um, 
fabric and I used that to finish off the neckline as well as adding straps and I had to work so quick on that that I didn't uh, show that here sorry guys you know most of my videos show you everything but this one did not and this is my finished dress thank you guys so much for watching I appreciate you guys more than you know if you liked this video go ahead and check out some of my other videos and I'll see you guys in my next one